Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you for joining us this week. And um, I will again, but Merry Christmas and may the spirit of the season be with us all. Um, I wanted to invite you here this afternoon because truly, as a Barbadian woman, I am completely embarrassed and humiliated by the fact of the Barbados government's failure to provide any support whatsoever in respect of the government guarantee and letters that were necessary for the Cricket World Cup 2018 Women's Tournament in November, I believe, of next year. Um, West Indies are the defending champions, and the majority of the West Indies team are Barbadians. Seven of the 13 women are Barbadian girls. And to have this opportunity in the only country in the Caribbean that has hosted three Cricket World Cup finals, one in 2007, the 50 over version of the game, and two in 2010 under this government, the 20 over game, for both men and women, for us not to, Mr. Simmons, join us please, for us not to be prepared to offer a government guarantee that would give the government no greater exposure than three or four hundred thousand US dollars in respect to the waiver of fees for the teams that would be participating, arranging for their being appropriately met at the airport. Um, for them to refuse to provide that written guarantee in spite of repeated requests by the Barbados Cricket Association is really a most unfortunate state of events. And it causes me to ask, whose interest is really being served here? Would the government guarantee have been given if it served the government's political interests or indeed other interests? But how does a country that has the largest number of players anywhere out of the 200 countries in the world in a sport that is a... You let the truck go. In a sport that is a global sport for a team, the majority of whom come from this little rock, how do we fail to respond in circumstances where our history and tradition in cricket is as glorious and as excellent as it is, and where now the women of Barbados have shown that they are capable of attaining global excellence? What are we saying to the hoteliers who would otherwise be getting this business in November of next year, a good month before the tourist season starts, or the taxi drivers, or the restauranters, or all of the other people, the craftspeople, all of the people who would be expected to service not just the teams visiting Barbados, but the many thousands of persons coming to view the games. And for the sake of it, we are aware that the last Cricket World Cup that took place in Barbados, that there is a study that shows that the economic benefit of hosting those games was in excess of $51 million, Barbados dollars. Now, for a country that is seeking growth, and for a country that wants to celebrate the achievements and the potential of its citizens, on every front, this makes absolutely no sense. But we have become accustomed to a government that acts only in its political interests or in the interests of a few friends. And this government has displayed it over and over. And perhaps maybe the Barbados Cricket Association should have had different initials from BCA if they wanted the government guarantee um, to, 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 to be provided for them in good time. What was significant is that even in spite of surpassing passing the deadline, inspectors still came to visit in Barbados in hope that that guarantee would come. Now, you will get the rest of the story, I imagine, from Cricket West Indies and from Barbados Cricket Association. Our concern is the failure of a government to respond in the best interests and instincts of its citizens, to defend our interests, this is a big thing. When we won this, we felt proud that Barbadians were the majority of the team. 
And we feel that Barbadian women should be able to aspire. Some little girl in my constituency or Kerry's or Santi's constituency would like to be the next Haley Matthews, captaining the women's cricket team of the West Indies, winning a Cricket World Cup in the future in Australia or South Africa or Barbados again. And what are we doing to our people? But we can find money to spend on all other kinds of trivia. And this is the exact reason that we built Kensington Oval, to be able to facilitate the hosting of global events such as these that will spur economic activity such as it did for this government in 2010, over $51 million. Or is it that they care not what happens next year in November because it is a date beyond the date of elections? And is this not the ultimate admission of them with respect? to their own incompetence and failure. This is about the Barbados government carrying us and plumbing the new depths, or to use the cricket in turn, dropping the ball yet again for what was a lollipop catch in the hosting of this. There's no simpler decision that could have been made to defend national honor, to defend the promise of global excellence for Barbadian women, and to defend equally the economic benefits that could potentially go to our hoteliers who are suffering on the South Coast now, to our taxi drivers, to our restauranters, to our trades um, craftsmen. Um, and I'd like Kerry and Santia to speak to this issue because this, this is <coughs> dumbfounding. Yeah. Robert, I know you had a te deadline to make, so if you want in any way. All right, thanks. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I want to echo the, the, the sentiments as I expressed. Um, I personally, my heartfelt deep concern on this matter is that there is a symbolism that comes with the hosting of an international event. And as Mia quite rightly pointed us to, generations to come look at the hosting of an event as being an opportunity for them to see a game that they want to play in, that they want to participate in, that they have um, ambitions and aspirations of their own personal development, they want to look. I think back to when I was a little boy going with my grandfather to Kensington Noble to watch <laughs> test cricket for the first time, and I wanted to be Michael Holding, you know? And I think all of us have been there at some point in time. And we are now robbing young Barbadian girls and across this country of an opportunity to be part of that kind of dream and the sharing and developing of ambition. And we are doing that in circumstances where better could have been done. The truth of the matter is that for several months now, this government has been given more time and, and, and more time, and yet again, they have failed to step up to the plate. And this is just another replication of the failures that this government has um, demonstrated with respect to almost every other issue that faces us in Barbados. And the question now has to be asked, how much is too much? I really think that the point is, the time has come where, that's you, I really think that the time has come where people of Barbados have to say that this is a slap in the face of the country. This is our national game. It is not a game only that men play now, it is a game that females play. It is a game that the, the, the female role should be highlighted just as the male role has been highlighted. Excellence has been achieved by women's cricket from this region. And I think it is a, a very disgraceful thing that we are now having invested so heavily in Kensington Noble before and in making the facilities international symbols of excellence. Now we have let down the young females of Barbados. You know, regrettably, nothing drives this government other than their own personal, political, and other interests. Uh, and this is what Barbados has had enough of because there is a Barbados that is worthy of being saved and worthy of being celebrated. And that is what we are missing. Sound yes? Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. A niche has been created in sports tourism in relation to women in cricket. It is something that a number of young women have been able to now aspire to and to see 
that particular avenue as an opportunity to earn not only locally but also regionally and certainly internationally. The inability of this administration to back an event of this nature speaks volumes in terms of the direction in which and certainly the lack of vision that this administration has in relation to sports tourism and i think it speaks volumes in terms of the lack of focus that we have seen in almost every other sector of the management of this administration of the barbadian economy there are young women who i know would have wanted to be a part of this type of event um, it certainly would have benefited not only the South Coast, but certainly the, the West Coast of this island in relation to the hotel sector and to a number of the people who, despite the, the number of tourists coming to the island, a number of people within the, the um, hotel sector are complaining of the, the reduced number in terms of visitor spend. So I think at this time, anything that we can do as a country to encourage investment into Barbados, to encourage um, an increase in arrivals and certainly to expand the traditional um, timeline for earning money from tourism, the government of Barbados has a responsibility to explore every single initiative to the fullest. But it does speak to the fact that there is a lack of foresight in relation to the wider tourism master plan. Um, clearly, whether or not there's an election, um, we are on the eve of an election, any administration has a responsibility to look to the future and to ensure that there is continuity in terms of administration and that there's continu continuity in terms of the vision for the overall economy. You can't, as an administration, drop the ball simply because we are on the eve of an election. It is something that requires careful thought and certainly regardless of what happens after the election, this is a, a tremendous loss to certainly the tourism and certainly to the sporting sector and to every young Barbadian woman who would have wanted to see this become a reality in Barbados and to be able to look up to these women who've been at the forefront of this game to be able to say I can perhaps do better or, or, or go further as a, a global citizen in relation to the cricket fraternity. Thank you. Um, let me say that it is our understanding that we have not even gone a preliminary match. It's bad enough that having hosted the last three finals in the region and clearly showing a capacity so to do that we're not even getting a preliminary match. And it is our understanding that in spite of what may otherwise be excellent bids, that the absence of the government guarantee effectively has ruled us out of this. Um, this is not good enough and this needs to be explained by the government of Barbados, from the Prime Minister to the Minister of Sports, um, as to why they failed to be able to allow the natural and legitimate expectations of all Barbadian women to shine on a global stage from Bridgetown, from Kensington Oval. And may I say that I feel, as a person who is a senior person in public life in this country, that we owe some kind of explanation to Haley Matthews, to Shakira Selman, to Deandra Dottin, to Kisia Knight, to Kishona Knight, to Shamila Connell, and even to Shaquana Quinton, who as we know is injured and we wish her a speedy recovery, because this is simply not good enough. This is not the Barbados that I knew. This is not the Barbados that I grew up in. This is not the Barbados that I have worked in. This is not the Barbados that I want to build with the rest of you in this country. Because we can do better, because we are better than this. And what it would have cost government is minimal in comparison to what they're spending at the Bridgetown port, to what they're spending in the Ministry of Housing, to what they're spending otherwise arbitrarily across all other ministries. And this is about priorities. And priorities also mean that we celebrate excellence at the national level. But if that excellence comes at the global level, we celebrate it loud. And if it comes at a minimal cost, because the cost of waiving visas is foregone revenue that this government does all the time, they forego tax incentives. Sorry, tax, taxes, sorry. 
far less visa fees. And a visa fee is what, $100? Mm -hmm. Basically. They send people to the airport all the time to meet people. And what does it cost? Some Barbadians in Papova Carnival Kaduma costumes, one or two on a steel band, one or two singing. Welcoming people to our country used to be our business, not our burden. And to that extent, how we fail to waive visa fees and how we fail to welcome people to our country as we welcome the world. And we have not even started to talk about the global television audience, which is in the hundreds of millions of people when you take into account India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, um, Canada, parts of the United States of America, um, where there are strong Asian and British populations and West Indian populations, the global audience is in the hundreds of millions. How does Barbados seemingly forego such an excellent opportunity that under this administration has already been proven to bring at least $51 million in economic activity in, in 2010? And this now has nothing to do with dashing the hopes of more than half of our population because women constitute just over half of the population with respect to our women being able to celebrate that global excellence. Are there any questions? Um, if I'm a bit devil's advocate, um, I'm based on anecdotal evidence, just viewing uh, women's work on television. Is it possible that the argument could have been that uh, given the sparse crowd scene at the Women's World Cup, uh, very few traveling contingents uh, following these teams around that the financial spin off would not have been as great? Um, you want a copy of the economic impact? No, I said, I And that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. That not getting 25,000 doesn't mean that you don't get five or 10,000. So that's a spurious argument. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that there is a hardcore of people who follow sp global sporting events, regardless of where they are. Okay? So that I don't accept that whatsoever. Oh, Were you here in 2007 or 2010? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So therefore, you would have seen but that in both in instances. With, with all due respect, I, 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 with, well, I, I, I think that you may want, therefore, to reflect and rephrase that, yeah. because I would like to suggest to you, and Santi made the point, mm -hmm. that this is an event that has perhaps the fastest growing trajectory, because it is an emerging sport for women, and in a way that when we were growing up, women didn't have this opportunity. So believe you me, this is one that is worthy of our support. Can I just make one other point on that, um, observation on that point you make? Because I know that that is what we will hear from the government side. And I, I want to say to you, because I know you follow the game of cricket too. When you have a final, and it need not be a final, it could be a preliminary game. You have it, the global television audience is not just watching the game. During breaks between overs, they're often watching footage of what the country offers. That is advertising for the rest of the world that we can't possibly pay for through the Barbados Tourism Authority. You're seeing the culture of Barbados. You're seeing the, the beauty of Barbados. You're seeing interviews with the people of Barbados. You're seeing the highlights of all that this country has to offer. And it makes perfect sense to me that the Ministry of Tourism should have been the first people to be lobbying and pressuring government for this kind of of footage and reach to be made available to all the rest of the world because they, on their own, can't possibly do it. I, I may say that the cost, and this is the fundamental point, is the cost of waiving visas and welcoming people. That's fundamentally the cost. Kensington Oval is already built. Kensington Oval has to be maintained for local audiences for other events. Kensington Oval must have its pitches ready and available for regional events. So what is the extra cost to the government and people of Barbados? I can see the benefits. The costs are minimal. And as Kerry said, you, you couldn't buy that kind of ad for 300,000 US, probably even in, 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 in a half hour of, 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 of advertising on CNN or one of the um, global channels. Yeah. Um, also, the 
pictures of cat cans in them uh, were also something a concern uh, to the international cricketing community. Um, so it was the government backing the only factor, or what was what were the other mitigating circumstances? I, I don't speak where I am not authorized to speak, or where I am not privy of knowledge to speak, um, and. That is a habit that perhaps others should also acquire. Um, so I would suggest that the best thing for you to do is to go to the Barbados Cricket Association and ask them about the state of the pitches. As far as I know, remedial work has been going on, and this match is these matches were intended to be a year from now. I would find it very difficult to believe that that would be the case, but I am not authorized to speak in that respect. I can speak, however, of what government ought to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, Roberta? If I can go a little off topic. Mm -hmm. um, the NEPW had a meeting with the civil service last week, um, and it's looking like they are going to get that COVID subsidy that they asked for. Um, does the opposition have any comment on it? Because I know there was I'm not aware of what has been agreed to, but suffice it to say that since May of this year, when the government introduced the National Social Responsibility Levy, the opposition called, we called it a cost of living allowance. The NUPW has called it a coping subsidy. If it comes, it is eight months late and ought to have been received long ago because Barbadians are reeling under the pressure of the cost of living increases in this country as a result of an unfair and discriminatory NSRL that may find itself being imposed on the same good more than once mm -hmm. and for which multiple persons across the society cannot agree as to how and where it is to be applied. This is, this, this, this is a bad tax and taxes must be certain, must be fair, must be transparent. And in this respect, we believe the NSRL to be a bad tax. Um, to the extent that the public of Barbados can be shielded, the public servants can be shielded through a cost of living allowance in the absence of a wage increase for nine years is long, long, long overdue. Mm -hmm. Government gave them seven and, and I forget, as Kerry's reminding me, especially against the background that this government gave itself a 10% restoration on top of also taking the back pay from that 10% restoration for over a year. And may I remind you that the opposition's position was that we could not accept any such increase in the absence of the public service being treated fairly in this country. And to that extent, ours has gone to a number of charitable institutions. Okay? Any other questions on Cricket World Cup? Okay. I want to say to each and every one of you, today is what, the 19th? In less than seven weeks, um, seven days, sorry. You were, no, it was a, uh, no, 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 this is just Christmas joy, Christmas spread. Um, we hope that we can see some of you, I think, later this week. But this is the time of the year when we really need to reflect on the spirit of the season. And as we go into next week, also on what the last year has meant to us and what the next year should mean to us. And I look forward, therefore, to seeing all of the people that I see in this room later this week. Um, so I'm going to wish you only because it's the spirit of so doing, but I hope that I'll have another chance as well to wish you Merry Christmas, um, Happy New Year, and may the spirit of the season imbue all of you such that we give what we can, um, not just physically, but through a generosity of spirit that, that is so badly needed in, in our society. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.